Hi there, my name's Will Fraser and uh, I'm an accidental sculptor and I'm here to tell you how I went from absolutely zero sculpting experience um, at the beginning of the lockdown uh, through to having a complete series uh, of sculptures finished by the end of it. So my journey to sculpting, um, particularly sculpting this series, is a two-part journey really. And the first part is um, starts many years back when I started to play polo, um, which is a sport that I'm very passionate about. Um, and uh, I feel that polo is one of those kind of sports and activities that's really an art form in itself. Um, and the reason that I think that is that it's a sport that involves an interaction between hu man and animal um, and it's very fast-paced, uh, very aggressive and quick game but it's also a very beautiful and almost serene great game as well um, that has this really wonderful balance between p player and, and horse um, and uh, it's also a really spectacular spectator sport as many of you will probably know. So before I had any sculpting experience, I, I kind of had this passion for polo. Um, and this, the second part of my journey to sculpting starts uh, here um, at the, the Red House, which is where the Korra family live. Um, and I accidentally, well, not accidentally, but I ended up in lockdown here. Um, and Mark Korra, who is, um, he's a, an animal wildlife sculptor. And I, with all my free time, I basically ended up under his um, basically tutelage, I suppose, and um, he gave me a sort of beginning guide to, to sculpting. Um, and Mark's approach uh, was the things that really kind of um, captured my imagination with Mark and his approach to sculpting is that he always, he's a wildlife sculptor and he's always talking about animals and the dynamic movement that they have and their ability to interact with each other and Mark has always trying to capture those moments in, in sculpture and that is something that when I thought of it just made me think of polo um, because polo again is um, a really dynamic game there's a lot of movement and there's also an interaction between the horses and uh, and an interaction between the horse and the player and between the players so it's kind of a really um, lots of different angles and lots of movement and lots of dynamics. So I was really inspired to create um, a sculpture um, of, a, of a polo pony um, in action based on those two factors. My passion for polo mixed in with Mark's um, sort of passion for animals and sculpting. Having heard Mark talk about his, about his inspiration and, and the movement in animals and everything I've just talked about, what I really kind of wanted to achieve was a polo play, player uh, and pony in a really dynamic movement. But I was a bit nervous at the start because I realised that it was quite a big undertaking for someone that had zero sculpture experience. I think you have really pull, pulled off an extraordinary success here. Um, I mean, let's just go, going back to the beginning, um, when you kind of just simply hadn't even a smidge of the first clue at how to go about, how to go about things. Yeah. Um, and I, I essentially, what did I do? I taught you to make armatures, good strong armatures, all the straight from the sketch that I keep talking about yeah. um, in it. Being perfectly straight about it all, you picked that up just like that. Mm. Um, but remembering that armatures both the strength and the sketch, yeah. that is what you really achieved. You've got the strength in these sculpture is perfect, but the dynamics of the work comes through the sketch that you have built into that armature. Yeah. Um, and, and you look through the whole gambit of these uh, ponies and players, and there is so much movement, so much dynamism, um, and they, just, they kind of work so well together, not just as, I mean, as Zinglies, yes, but as pairs, as three, four, five, the whole lot together, and yeah, that was the the armatures, the thing that I um, 
that I actually quite enjoyed that part because it's got, got quite a technical mind. So measuring out the skeleton and all the different measurements is quite a technical process. So you kind of almost feel a bit of comfort that at least you know that the length of its legs and the head and everything is going to be the right proportions. But bending that armature into the shape is then the kind of the, the shape of the movement, that's where the kind of inspiration comes in and that's a part of the process that I've really enjoyed. Um, this style to me is such fun. Yeah. Um, it is, I just adore the fact that you know, there are faces staring out underneath those you know, hats. It is just, it's the impression of a polo pony, impression of a polo player, the impression of where um, the, the dynamics is going. That's when sculpture is about being an impression of the subject you're doing. Yeah. It, they've translated to bronze beautifully um, and they will translate into almost a sort of jigsaw puzzle of fun. Yeah. Um, and you know, what more can you ask out of, out of the art? Yeah. This is art. Absolutely. And the thing that I was just on that point about the impression um, is you know the the they nec won't necessarily appeal to everyone I suppose but I'm really the part of sculpting that really has inspired me is that the movement and what I'm trying to achieve really is for someone else who plays polo or watches it or follows it will be able to look at one of these pieces or a series of these pieces together which they're all we've kind of come up with different ways that they can interact with each other um, that they'll look at that and really understand and recognise and almost feel that um, movement. I haven't sculpted anything here that I haven't felt myself on the polo pitch and I've tried to channel that energy into each sculpture. So while they're probably technically not, you know, exactly right and I've no doubt that, you know, um, it, they're quite impressionist, but I think what I'm trying to get is more the you know, that movement, basically. And the story. And the story, and exactly. And that's what you've achieved. Well, <laughs> I think you're a pretty good student. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good teacher, too. <laughs> no, well done. Um, so, like I said before, one of the things that I've been trying to achieve is a kind of interaction between the players and interaction between the horses um, and also tell a story from, from a match. Um, so, I've got quite a few different um, scenarios set up, but one I just wanted to, uh, kind of one of the simplest and quickest to explain is the ride-off, and that's one that I want to share with you. And basically, uh, you know, those who play polo out there will know that the way polo works is that the, everyone has, there's the sort of right away across the line of the ball, and <clears throat> um, what happens is that you can contest that right away by using the strength of the horse to push the other horse off the line of the ball. So I've tried to kind of capture that moment here um, and we've got this player and this horse in, uh, well all players and all horses here are in, are in full gallop and this horse is, you know, come in and is really trying to push the this horse off, off the ball and so I've tried to kind of capture that moment with this horse kind of putting its head up a bit um, in, a, in a bit of a shock almost and this player has got his legs out all over the place and his body contorted to try and um, edge his horse back into to kind of contest that line of the ball and um, one of the most exciting things really about polo is the fact that this is you know this particular part of the game is something that the horses love I think because it's what they do in the wild and they run around together and they ride each other off and um, it's you know it just epitomizes part of the dynamic and interaction um, and beauty really of the sport so that's what I was trying to capture here. <laughs> 